the United Arab Emirates. A fairy tale of the 1001 nights situated on the Arabian Peninsula between the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. In just a relatively few years, this region has been catapulted from the Middle Ages into the 21st century. It is now an international financial center within an ancient desert region. Here, there are seven sheikdoms that are united both politically and economically, each with its own traditions, and they created this new paradise in the Gulf. Dubai, a wonderful holiday paradise with a romantic desert and a long history where the past unites with the present. The Dubai Museum is a good place to learn about the region's history. In 1830, this former fishing village was under the rule of Maktoum. Dubai is now the second largest state in the United Arab Emirates and is situated on the north coast of the Arabian Peninsula. Dubai became the largest center of trade for goods from Persia and India and in 1971 became a member of the Confederation. The Bastakaya district is the historical center of the city. Its buildings contain wind towers that help to cool the interiors. The openings create a current of air. The traders built their houses from coral stone close to the ship's moorings. The beautifully restored old houses and narrow lanes are an atmospheric reminder of bygone times. The Bastakaya district has been revitalized and even the mosque in the old city district has been fully restored. This natural tributary is called the creek and winds its way through the town. It divides Berdira from Berduba and is its lifeline full of hustle and bustle both night and day. The reflective facades of the city's breathtaking skyscrapers are like something from a futuristic world. The view from the creek shows Dubai at its most contemporary. Dubai's futuristic skyscrapers are full of Arabian flair. exotic city and ancient river. But despite the vast wealth of this desert metropolis, many of its inhabitants continue to lead a modest existence. At first sight, these busy looking wooden boats look rather chaotic. But the ferry boats or abras maintain an orderly schedule. In no other city in the United Arab Emirates are the contrasts so obvious and the past is gradually taking on a whole new life of its own. In the former Al Shindaga district directly on the creek is the Sheikh Said Palace one of the few remaining buildings of the original settlement. Sheikh Said bin Maktoum resided here until his death in 1958. Today, it contains a museum. Due to its strategic position, this national monument and its characteristic wind towers and stout walls provides a splendid view across the entrance to the creek.
A large fish market in the Daira district is a popular tourist attraction. Selling the daily catch is quite a noisy affair. The large variety of fresh fish and seafood is a colourful sight. Fishermen offer their tasty goods for sale and constantly scatter ice to protect it from the scorching heat. The main reason for the success of the Daira district is due to the various souks that originated here in the 19th century and still flourish today. Dubai was once an important trading city with nearly 7,000 inhabitants. And the first trading families from Persia settled here. There are around 300 shops in the souk, each of which pays a nominal tax to the sheikh. You can buy almost anything here. But the special attraction is the gold souk. This city of gold has a long tradition, and its motto is the larger and the heavier, the better. Gold has always played an important role here. Modern shopping centres are in stark contrast to the ancient souks. A large variety of products from all over the world is displayed in these air-conditioned and spotless surroundings. The huge clock tower, located in the middle of a roundabout, surveys the Al Maktoum bridge that connects both banks of the creek. In front of the city gates and close to the desert-like surroundings is the Nad al Sheba camel track. In the winter months, this is where racing camels are trained. The jockeys are seven to ten-year-old boys from Somalia and Pakistan. Betting is forbidden. The prize is honor and fame. It is a serious affair. Due to the abundance of petrodollars, the profit from the camel races became less significant and so the spirit of the races became more important than the money. Built in 1983, the filigree architecture of the Jumeirah Mosque is particularly impressive and a popular photo opportunity for the tourists. A royal decree states that each of the city's mosques must be within no more than one kilometer from each member of the population. A royal decree indeed. The Dubai Zoo is also located in the Jumeirah district. It is the oldest zoo in the Arabian Peninsula and contains more than 1,500 animals. Although the zoological gardens are rather uninteresting, the zoo contains a rich variety of animals from all over the world. Between Beach Road and the coast is the Jumeirah Beach Club, a paradise of bikinis and bathing and the long white traditional attire turns beach volleyball into a whole new game.
But today, Dubai has a striking new landmark. The Burj Al Arab, the Arabian Tower, one of the most spectacular hotel buildings on the planet. Its breathtaking hotel lobby is the largest in the world. The abundant splendor of both color and design is unique. The lavish decor and magnificent design is quite extraordinary, with no expense spared. This, the only seven-star hotel in the world, was built on an artificial island and looks like a huge sail that's bending in the wind. This is the fabulous world of oil-rich sheikhs. The Burj Al Arab is highly exclusive, a popular meeting place of the rich and famous. A superlative luxury hotel. Huge mosques and glimmering skyscrapers appear like a mirage in the flickering heat of the desert. In just a few years, this once humble-looking region has developed into a modern and successful state situated between Europe and Asia. Dubai, pure luxury set amid the unyielding desert. A fairy tale of the 21st century. From Bedouin village to a flourishing center of commerce and high finance. After the splendor and exotic atmosphere of the city, the desert. First, a little pressure is released from the tires. And now the adventure can begin. Dune riding. Travelling by four-wheel drive vehicle through the dunes is an exciting experience and a must for all who come to enjoy Dubai. As this vehicle reaches the summit of a steep sand dune and only the sky is visible in front of the bonnet, each passenger is somewhat apprehensive. A split second later, the real action begins. It's great fun traveling down the steep dunes and then up the next at full speed. A demonstration of the driver's skills is particularly impressive. The ascent of a sand dune is truly gratifying, as on top, there's a spectacular view of the surrounding desert. The journey across the sand dunes continues. We have a full schedule, and there's a lot of desert to cover. In order to avoid punctures, the tire pressure has to be checked continuously. Safety is key. Another stop and yet another opportunity for the professionals to perform their party pieces. Sand flies everywhere.
But eventually, someone gets stuck in the sand. On the edge of the Rubal Kali Desert, the sand dunes are more than 150 meters above sea level. The line of cars in the desert safari slowly winds its way across the dunes. And now, a gentler pursuit. It's time to delve into the region's natural history. Fossilized shells indicate that the desert once formed the bed of an ancient ocean. Punctures are an inevitable part of the day's events. Next, it's wadi driving in the mountains. Bumpy gravel roads and rugged riverbeds have to be negotiated. The skill of the drivers is put to the test. Time for a rest at a beautiful location on the dried out riverbed. A well deserved break and an appetizing picnic. Dusty gravel roads lead deeper into the Hajar Mountains, the offshoots of a mountain landscape in the eastern area of the Emirates. leads further up into the mountains. Passing strange rock formations, the road travels across steep and dangerous bends. Deep canyons alternate with undulated areas. The mountains are 3,000 meters above sea level. For thousands of years, erosion has carved its way through the rock. There's more adventure to come, a wild drive across a riverbed as the water splashes high into the sky. Next, the final item on the agenda, a visit to a camel farm on the edge of the desert, pure Arabia. A short trip by camel train around the farm. Then a visit to a romantic Bedouin village full of the atmosphere of ancient times. The sounds of the approaching night make the sunset even more captivating. Fifteen kilometers from Dubai is the tiny emirate of Sharjah, where life continues according to age-old Arabian tradition. Tourism was once popular on this former pirate coast, but the Saudi king subsequently prohibited the consumption of alcohol so the tourists stayed away.
With only a modest income derived from the oil industry, combined with an extensive building program, it was necessary for this emirate to borrow money from Saudi Arabia. However, industry soon prospered and developed here. Now the third largest emirate is becoming increasingly important. In the last 500 years, this principality has been threatened by the Portuguese, the Persians, the Omans, the Dutch, and finally, the British. But in 1971, the independent emirates united to form the United Arab Emirates, and a new confederation was born. The neo-Islamic architecture of Shahjah's souks is world famous, such as the Al Majara souk, a long sandstone building. A huge fountain welcomes those who come here, and a massive golden dome crowns the palatial building. Well-kept inner corridors shine out in warm shades of yellow. Here in the cool, there is a large variety of imported goods from all over the world. The underside of the dome is beautifully designed. Both walls and ceiling feature a starlit sky and each of its constellations. The Emirate of Sharjah measures 2,600 square kilometers and has a population of 500,000. It's half the size of Dubai. The old town has been partly restored. Several fine buildings and the town's historic fort have been given a new lease of life. This traditional building contains a number of small souks and museums. A good source of information about the country and its traditions. A stroll through the narrow lanes and small squares between the walls of the old town provides a fascinating insight into the daily life of bygone times. It was from here that the former Al Qasimi dynasty ruled for several centuries over the Gulf of Arabia. At the entrance to the Emirate of Ajman, huge posters of the Sheikh welcome visitors. He still dreams of discovering black gold. The smallest of the Emirates in the north of Dubai was at one time a center of pearl fishing and its people of fishermen and shipbuilders. The historic fort dates back to 1775 and contains a museum of Islamic traditions and handicrafts.
Until 1970, the old fortress was the residence of the royal family. And up until 1978, it was the headquarters of the chief of police. Two historic cannons still guard the entrance gate of the restored fort that is open to the public each day. Wide roads along the coast and little traffic. Our journey leads further northward, along the lengthy peninsula of the Gulf of Arabia. This is the tiny emirate of Umm al Kawen, whose large mosque welcomes all those who come here. The 40,000 inhabitants of the emirate's second smallest sheikhdom would hardly fill the Sheikh Zayad Stadium in Abu Dhabi. Again, the historic fort is the impressive centre of the old town. Both the chief of police and a museum are accommodated here. Being the smallest of the Emirates has its advantages, as both the Sheikh and his subjects enjoy generous allowances from the Confederation. Black cannon guard the entrance to the fort, and its sturdy walls are a reminder of its dramatic past. The nearby Straits of Hormuz were popular with European pirates who attacked the Arab trading ships that once sought shelter there. The museum contains an intriguing history of life in each of the Emirates. An amazing history of an amazing region. The Northern Emirates have developed at a more leisurely pace. Life here is less sophisticated. The people who live within this oasis survive from fishing and agriculture. Good roads lead eastwards through the desert to the mountains. The route to the Eastern Emirates on the coast of the Indian Ocean travels across the Hajar Mountains that go from north to south. Millions of years ago, this mountain range lay beneath a mighty ocean. This extraordinary natural phenomenon was created by the immense pressure caused by the physical shifting of the Earth's layers. Deep 
canyons cut through the mountains that divide this part of the Arabian Peninsula and dominate the eastern part of the Emirates. A natural wonder in all its splendor and a scenic gift for this region that now mainly survives from the oil industry. The history of oil began thousands of millions of years ago in the great oceans of prehistory. As countless creatures gradually decayed on the seabed, they created a sludge that could not decompose due to a lack of oxygen. The sludge that formed within the clay strata was transformed into hydrocarbon. Due to the tectonic movement of the earth, mountains were formed that covered the clay strata and forced what had now become oil into the hollow spaces below. Nowhere else on earth is there as much oil that is located so close to the surface of the ground. On the east coast, at the entrance to the village of Badia, is an Islamic sanctuary, the oldest mosque in the United Arab Emirates. The small, shining white mosque stands out against the grey brown of the rocks. Two old watchtowers are located above the four-domed clay building. It is believed that it was built by the Geminites. Modern coastal hotels, and in the city, huge mosques. This is Fujaira, the only emirate on the wild and romantic east coast. This area developed following centuries of isolation from the other emirates. Its large harbour had strategic advantages. The other prosperous emirates had roads built across the Hajar mountains to facilitate the transportation of goods. This brought much prosperity to the east coast along with some tourism. The remains of a few walls and clay houses are all that is left of the old town that was destroyed by the British in 1920. But nearby, on a small rock hill, is the town's fully restored fort. Its tall, sturdy walls were once an impregnable barrier for would-be attackers. The 
only mountain roads to the west coast have always been controlled from here. Throughout the centuries, these profitable trading routes have been the site of many a bloody battle. Fort Jahili protects the green metropolis of Alain, halfway between the east and west coast, a frontier town of the nearby state of Oman. On the western side of the Hajar Mountains, an oasis village developed that contains more than 200 springs and wells. This oasis was once frequently occupied by Saudi Arabia, but in 1974, the International Court of Justice in The Hague ruled against the Saudi occupation. Today, Oman and the United Arab Emirates share the nine oasis villages of the Buraimi Oasis and live together in peace. The Al Hosn Fort contains the Alain Museum that explains the daily life of the desert people and their culture. Various kinds of artistically styled daggers and falcons that are given much importance in the Arab world. Exquisitely decorated pots and chests, plus precious books. These old texts are particularly valuable, so they are well protected. Jewelry of all kinds indicates prosperity and rank. The burqa protects the face and is worn by the Bedouin women who take great pride in their appearance. A collection of ancient bowls demonstrates the long history of this region that was first settled thousands of years ago. The 5,000-year-old archaeological discoveries of Hili are among the museum's most important exhibits. Primeval illustrations of both man and animals were discovered in some ancient buildings, evidence of a prehistoric culture. In the northern area of the city are the Hilly Gardens, in which circular tombs that date back to the 4th millennium BC were discovered. They are 10 meters in diameter and 3 meters tall. Modern roads lead to the Muraba'a Forts the most impressive of the city's six fully restored fortresses. With massive circular towers and thick clay walls, the Murab'a was built in the 19th century to protect the Alain oasis. The oasis city of Alain now has a population of around 250,000. 
It has an international airport and a university. In 1898, Sheikh Zayed ibn Khalifa had the Al Jali fort built in which the country's present sovereign was born. The inner courtyard is entered by way of an imposing main gate and is protected by sturdy walls and rectangular tires. The complex is dominated by a three-story high circular tower that gradually tapers off from floor to floor. The Alain camel market is well known. Traders travel here from afar to the only market in the region in which animals are offered for sale to the public. Here, dromedaries are bought and sold. They are much prized by the Bedouin due to their flesh and milk. A handshake seals the deal. These creatures have always been the foundation of the Bedouin way of life. Without them, man would not have survived in the desert. A large highway crosses the desert to the capital of the largest of the Emirates, some 160 kilometers away. Palm trees divide the highway and green bushes protect the road against the ever-shifting sand dunes. The sheikhs also greet their subjects with a warm welcome. The richest and largest country in the Confederation displays its wealth. The modern skyline of Abu Dhabi is an impressive sight, built upon sandy islands just off the coast. On the edge of the city in Al Batian Bay are shipyards for the country's dars. These traditional ships are still built here. Dao is the collective word for the large variety of wooden ships built by the Arabs. They are still in use as fishing vessels and are also used for pearl fishing. Over the years, the construction techniques have hardly changed and Indian teakwood is still worked with skillful hands. There are no written plans. Each section is drawn with chalk on the wooden panels and then cut to size. Abu Dhabi is the largest of the seven emirates and means father of the gazelle. 
a name derived from an ancient legend. The Bedouin family of Nayan once lived in the Liwa Oasis. A member of the tribe glimpsed a gazelle on a sandy island close to the coast. At the spot where the gazelle drank from a waterhole, the fishing village of Abu Dhabi was founded. A collection of straw huts, clay houses and colourful tents. But in 1962, mineral oil was discovered here, from which the local sheikh accumulated a vast fortune. Since then, the city has grown from strength to strength. But amid all the modern splendor, both the old mosque and the Al Hosn fort have been well preserved. The region's few ancient buildings are held in much esteem. Fountains and parks, an amazing sight under the heat of the sun. Skyscrapers and shiny glass palaces, an abundance of both modern and traditional Arabian architecture. The 73,000 square kilometers of the Abu Dhabi region cover 86% of the United Arab Emirates. Abu Dhabi is also the center of government. In the 1960s, the city had a population of 5,000. Today, almost a million people live here. The modern metropolis of the Emirates is also its political and economic center of power. Due to its 20 parks and gardens, Abu Dhabi is known as the Garden City on the Gulf. Arid desert, now transformed into a lush city oasis. The Sheikh rides on a white horse and protects his people due to his unshakable faith in Allah, a God that encourages openness. There are as many mosques in this city as the year has days, and each is easily accessible for one and all. Five times a day, the faithful kneel towards Mecca, and each Friday is spent in prayer and rest. The clock tower is Abu Dhabi's main landmark. As with each of the Emirates, the distances within the city are measured from this point. Surrounded by splendid skyscrapers is the central souk in which almost everything is available for sale or repair. This country of contrasts enchants everyone with its oriental charm, and shopping is always popular.
time-honored traditions unite with the modern world, and necessary comforts blend with Arabian flair. As the oil supplies gradually trickle away, the sheikhs are becoming increasingly cautious with their spending. The oil boom has now been followed by tourism in this fairy tale holiday paradise that is full of desert romance.